Hello. Welcome. We are going to cover the VUCA or VUCA framework, or I, I call it a framework because it allows us to understand and analyze um, complex, volatile, uh, ambiguous, and uncertain project environments. I'm Ian Smith. I'm the Strategy Smith. I'm a management consultant and business coach. I'm an expert in project management. I've delivered projects all over the world in terms of projects and change, construction um, and real estate and things like that. And I've been involved in some major change uh, up to uh, 11 figures uh, and sat on uh, steering committees at that level as well. So I know a little bit about the, the VUCA framework um, in that I've been in those situations before. And I've provided, I'm going to provide, should I say, I've provided some uh, real examples and also some areas as to how you maybe see yourself being in that environment. Uh, and watching this video, you'll know, number one, that you're in that environment and not, um, and, and now being aware of it, sorry, and now being aware of, of uh, what the environment can be, can be categorized as and how you can deal with it. And that will come into fruition when I draw for you the the uh, the framework. So VUCA was actually coined by the military years ago in the US, um, and it was used to describe um, different scenarios and environments and how to deal with them. So it looks at, from one end of the scale, it looks at the confidence in the resulting outcomes. Basically, how well you can predict the results of your actions. So if you uh, are highly experienced in a certain area um, and you have done something uh, many, many times before, you can predict uh, possibly the, the results of your actions. Now, on the other end of the scale, which I'll draw for you in a second, it takes into account the level of knowledge in available data so even though you're highly experienced in performing a certain task or, or, or being in a certain project scenario or environment or, or culture in terms of organization or, or social culture even, um, how much do you know about the situation right now? So I've personally been uh, asked to go to uh, another part of the world to go and fix something. Uh, I'm, I mentioned I'm a competent project manager. Um, I'm experienced at working at group or global level at C-suite. Um, I've got 20 plus years of experience delivering projects, change, chosen or unchosen, mergers and acquisitions, etc. However, if I'm put into an environment, project environment, where I don't know a lot about the current situation, then that makes things complex and ambiguous for me, perhaps. Um, ambiguous if I'm not confident in terms of the predictability of the outcomes of my actions. However, if I am com confident in the, in, the, uh, in the results of my actions, but I don't know anything about the current situation until I get there, that gives me an element of flexibility. Uh, forgive me, complexity. That gives me an element of complexity that I need to recognize and, and handle straight away uh, to be able to understand I'm in a very complex environment. I'm very confident in terms of the results of my actions. However, without knowing and, and about and, and without understanding the, the amount of data that's available to me, which specific actions to take and when until I go and talk to people, that gives a, an element of complexity. So we'll draw the framework and we'll uh, I'm going to talk to you about um, volatility, about uncertainty, about complexity, and about ambiguity, and how we're able to look at the VUCA framework, recognize these environments, but more specifically in a project environment. The reason why I mention that is because in a project environment, you're dealing with a multiple uh, of, uh, of people, of stakeholders, of human beings, essentially and uh, other people's perception of environments and of cultures and, and essentially the way people think is different for every single person. Um, the, I'm not a brain expert, but I know the brain is the most comp complex system in the world. 
And so to be able to rationalize some of these environments and understand when we're in them and how to deal with them uh, in a project environment will, will serve us uh, moving forward as project managers and, and project leaders. So one end of the scale, I mentioned the predictability of the results of your actions, which can be interpreted as the confidence in the results of outcomes, uh, uh, resulting outcomes um, that are being taken. So from one end of the scale, we'll call this um, plus, and we can look at the predictability in the results of actions. And that also relates to the level of confidence in the resulting outcomes. So I'll just write here confidence. Outcomes. Okay. And that's the plus of, of this end of the scale. And down here will be the minus of, of the scale as well. So we'll draw an arrow here. Okay, uh, this will be minus or high and low. So if you've got high confidence, you can you can um, predict well the results of the of your actions. Now this end of the scale, we're still sticking with minus. Plus. This end of the scale is understanding the level of knowledge and available data. So how much you currently know about the situation. So we'll call this knowledge. And available data. So essentially, i.e. how much you know about the current situation, about the situation that you're in. And we'll talk about the individual quadrants of uh, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. So let's start with, it spelled VUCA, let's start with volatility first. We'll just get this into a nice neat uh, quadrant. That looks about right. Cool. Volatility. Okay. So let's say, for example, there's lots of knowledge and available data. There's lots of understanding of the current situation. There's high confidence and predictability of actions and outcomes. Now, what you may be thinking, and and when when I first saw this framework, um, I, I needed to look at it with my kind of cultural and organizational design and project uh, leadership, program management, portfolio management hat on, is you might be thinking, why is it determined to be a volatile environment when there's lots of knowledge and there's high confidence in the results of the outcomes. Well, again, in the project environment, if lots of people know lots of things about a certain situation, lots of people have high confidence and are able to confidently predict the results of their actions. In a project environment, everyone needs to be able to work towards the end goal of the project and therefore it can be volatile if there are different opinions and perceptions of the level of knowledge and available data because i'm talking about knowledge and available data in human beings brains they will uh, we will, will have all had different experiences in different um, uh, project environments and different scenarios in our lives and everything else and in, and in our occupations and in work. 
And therefore, we'll have our own perception in terms of confidence. And, and the reason why that environment can become volatile is because everyone has different opinions as to what success looks like. Everyone uh, or, a, or one or more people, two or more people, will have different thing, difference of opinions or perceptions as to um, how to achieve success. And then when there's too much knowledge and available data and overconfidence, if I was to talk about uh, mergers and acquisitions and investments and things like that, hubris, overconfidence belongs in the volatility section. So, so this, this challenge is, it's unexpected um, or unstable and it may be of unknown duration because if, if there's a, a, a huge group um, in, in, in terms of a, a project organization of incredibly high performing individuals, that can uh, sometimes be a volatile scenario. It's not necessarily hard to understand, but the knowledge it is often uh, the knowledge is often available. So, if I was to think of an example, it might be things like, um, well, God forbid, like a, a national a, a natural disaster, for example, um, where prices fluctuate, um, or it might be uh, something that is that is unchosen kind of change that's that's uh, that a, a business or a or an environment or a culture is going through um, that's probably the best way to think about it is unchosen change where there's lots of knowledge and once once there's lots of knowledge about the current situation the confidence as to what to do in a in a volatile scenario can come to the fore and so what's important here is to ensure that you increase engagement and, and you ensure that everyone is communicated to and increase engagement. So, so everyone knows exactly what everyone else is thinking and doing in sequence in accordance with the project or the program of work. Um, for instance, you can, you can think about um, business continuity planning. You can think about um, uh, in, inventory management for, for these unchosen changes that happen in a volatile uh, scenario. There's lots of it, like a spanner in the works, literally what happens if a spanner drops in the business critical ma um, machinery that is the, the heart and soul of the business. If a spanner is in the works and there's no plan, then volatility will come to the fore. Lots of knowledge and available data confidence about the uh, the actions that need to be taken to fix it, but it can be resolved in this scenario by having that forward planning um, forward planning mindset. There typically sometimes the steps taken can be can be expensive um, but you should be able to match the risk that's involved um, for the scenarios of volatility. Uh, so we we look at if I was to put an asset management hat on physical assets, um, and do you think of uh, optimizing the maintenance of physical assets in terms of asset management? You can employ something called a failure modes effects and criticality analysis. So you can look at business critical assets, what the failure modes of those assets are, what the causes of those failures, the criticality of the assets. And therefore, how to prioritize tasks and investment essentially for should the asset fail and how to fix it in accordance with the failure mode. Same thing with uh, business continuity plans, uh, same thing with disaster management plans, um, same thing with uh, inventory, same thing with um, redundancy for critical um, assets or critical pieces of equipment in. In environments, if you're replacing something that's critical to a business operation, there needs to be a backup to ensure that the business can continue to operate. So that's where I would sit with with volatility, um, lots of knowledge and available data, and high confidence in actions uh, outcomes of actions. It can result in um, personality clashes, culture clashes, um, if not managed or recognised uh, really quickly. In terms of business operations, 
And in terms of um, uh, unchosen change um, uh, for the business itself, for the operations or the uh, infrastructure required systems, plant equipment, et cetera, then plans and contingencies and business continuity and disaster plan and everything else can be taken into account, uh, right down to something as simple as a risk assessment to, to ensure that should this volatile situation occur, there's something in place to ensure that we can manage it moving forward. So that would be a good, a good case example of issue management. An issue is something that happens, that impacts the program, the business, the operation, the critical success factors, et cetera, that was potentially unforeseen, but has had an impact. How are we going to manage it? That's a good way of explaining volatility uh, and how this will work. But the main thing with this is recognizing when something becomes volatile uh, and having and uh, ensure that there's sufficient knowledge available and how much you know about that situation um, and the confidence in the results of your actions. So that's volatility. We'll put a tick there so I don't cover it twice. Next thing is uncertainty. Uncertainty. So if there's lots of knowledge and available data and you have lots of uh, understanding of the current situation, but there's low confidence or you're not able to easily predict the results of your actions. Um, sometimes this can happen when there's a, a high level of understanding of a, a situation, but there's not necessarily the skill set or the experience that's delivered it before. So sometimes events can can basically can cause and uh, cause and effect are known, but the, the change needed is, is not necessarily there yet. So going back to failing modes and, and, and uh, effects analysis and failing modes effects criticality analysis, you can, you can easily understand, sometimes you get with things that you buy even from a, 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 a component level, you get a troubleshooting manual. But to ensure what change is, is required specifically is not yet known. And that's where some things can become uncertain. And what do you need to do? You need to find someone that, or, or, a, or a, a specialist or a, or a project team collectively to be able to collate that knowledge and then put in place a plan or a change to increase the confidence and be able to predict the results of the outcomes. So an example is like a, a competitor, uh, they're pending some form of launch um, and it, it kind of, uh, it kind of muddles what's going on in the market. So lots of knowledge and available data, but not understanding specifically what to do in order to change. Uh, do we need to respond to that? Do we need to uh, take into account some certain things that will allow us to predict the outcomes of our of our actions. So the best case here is although you have high knowledge available data and understanding of the situation, the biggest asset is skills. So invest in information, collect, and interpret, and share it, and engage and engage and engage with any change chosen or unchosen. And it works in conjunction with structural changes such as you know adding information. Um, and, and innovation sharing networks. And then this can reduce any kind of uncertainty as to what the plan is. Um, so this, this uh, comes into, into play with, with unchosen change again. So something that's happened where a project team or a project environment needs to form, invest in understanding everyone else's knowledge uh, innovation partnering is a great, great technique. Um, they actually use that technique in 3M, where they employ innovations and lessons learned and share it all over the world. So the people at 3M are continuously learning, innovating, applying what they've learned, 
then taking what they, they've learned and redeploying that around the organization. That's a good way to alleviate uncertainty um, when things happen. And a lot of this, it, it's important to recognize, is a continuous learning culture that needs to be employed within the business. If that's employed within the business, you will ensure that your, your knowledge and available data and how, you know, how much people know about the, the business, the, the, the project environment, um, it, it will ensure that you're prepared for unchosen change in terms of uncertainty because you'll be able to understand what change needs to be made. You might have low confidence in terms of the resulting outcomes, but at least you'll be able to recognize and employ that change and invest in information once you've um, uh, taken action, learned from that action, and then taken action further down the line. And of course, in, 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 in alignment with the controls necessary for the project and the environment that you're, that you're working in. So that's uncertainty. Now, let's look at complexity. So I mentioned complexity before about someone or a, or a project team being able to uh, be kind of like the the uh, the go-to team, let's say, um, or the go-to person that have high confidence and are able to, from their own experience, predict the results of their actions in terms of outcomes, but don't know yet the uh, have proficient knowledge or don't don't know much about the current situation and so in terms of a team that needs to be formed it might be a project lead uh, like like me for example needing to go into uh, another country or another business form a team and uh, employ some form of change that's uh, that's been chosen or unchosen so this is kind of has many interconnected parts to it um, and variables as well. So some information is available and can pre and can be predicted, but the volume or the nature can be overwhelming in the process because don't necessarily know a lot about the current situation. So for me, for example, one task I was asked to do was to go from the UK into the US, tour uh, a number of facilities, understand how they operated, and then take a best practice model operation to be deployed everywhere else in the world. So that was complex for me. I, I had experience in doing that before, but needed to go into individual facilities, which were their own businesses in their own right, work with the teams there and understand exactly what they do in comparison to the next facility. And there was a, a number of these around the, the, the US in different states and things and how they operated and being able to adopt best practice from that to redeploy it around the world. So doing business in many countries, um, all with unique uh, regulatory environments, cultural uh, changes as well. Um, of course, different businesses will operate in different ways, even if they're part of the same business. So good way to, the good way I found with working with complexity, number one, you turn up with absolute humility. Um, you need to be very, very humble, know that these guys are running a business. Um, and when you're looking at a, a, a business or a project environment, the good way to look at it is, is to bring on and develop uh, specialists, um, build up the, the people and the teams so that you and the project team can increase their knowledge and, uh, and uh, understanding of the current situation that will eliminate some of the complexity. And again, it comes down to continuous learning with each other uh, and, and taking action and then learning from that action. As long as it's in sequence and tied into the controls of the project, if, if you're delivering a, a project or a change within your working context. So we've covered them, complexity. So the next one is ambiguity. So something is ambiguous when you have low confidence in the results of the outcomes and of the resulting outcomes, 
and not much knowledge of the situation. So low level of knowledge and available data. So how do you handle ambiguity? First of all, recognize when something is ambiguous. If you uh, feel slightly exposed, um, for, so for example, if I'm, I had to build a global network in scientific and clinical environments, and I was, uh, work, I was working with, within a healthcare sector with guys that are seasoned and have medical degrees, uh, PhDs. Um, and so for, for me, that, that for me in terms of the project team was ambiguous. However, for the people within the project team, and this is where we need to take into account cultural and mindset and, and, the, and the fact that we're dealing with human beings, they were in this area because they knew exactly what needed to be done in terms of the situation. They had high confidence and, and predictability of their, of their outcomes. So the good way of looking at this in terms of continual learning and managing project teams is the project lead, me, was in this box at the time, at the beginning, needing to lead and work with all of the superstars in this box here. And this box can be positive or sometimes it can, it can sometimes be a bit toxic when you've got a group of high performers all having different, different uh, opinions. So being able to cross these boundaries as well is, is, is really important. And recognizing when certain environments, project environments can change. And what we were able to achieve was something quite incredible. So I built three global networks, uh, one for energy management, again, working with uh, incredible engineers, being able to deliver global programs of work um, that could be interpreted to be complex. Um, I'm not an engineer. We were able to build another network for critical environments and data centers. I'm not an engineer, um, but I was able to understand in terms of the project environment with the utmost humility, working with these uh, incredible people um, and being able to understand and lead that team to be able to deliver the outcomes for the, for, the, for the project. So for example, for a project lead, if you're watching this and you, you're recognizing some of these situations that, that you've been in, being able to simply ask the question and recognize that I don't know everything, but we all do in terms of the project environment, that will set you off in good stead. Um, when you when you find yourself in 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 terms of a volatile, uncertain, uh, 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 complex or ambiguous uh, situation when you're managing a project team, and that's a bit of an example as to how sometimes project teams can think in a project environment. So, in terms of uh, ambiguity, so for example, um, you could have a scenario that I explained where. Um, at that at that time, I was I was and and, and obviously I'm in terms of uh, my capabilities to be able to to do that. But at the time, to to compare myself to the uh, subject matter experts that I was leading, I was I was down here in terms of my predictability of of the act, of the outcomes of my actions, um, and also I had uh, at the very beginning law law knowledge and, and available data whereas the guys who i was working with uh the project teams uh the, the ladies and gents uh in, in those teams i would put them in, in, in there and they, it was a very positive uh, uh healthy volatility so in terms of ambiguity um let's say we we as a business again chosen change this time choose to enter into a market that's not ready for us. Um, you know, so we, we've got something that we feel is market leading. However, we want to use it in another market. And so we've got, we're going to grow organically or we, we're going to take our operation and we're going to expand into another region, into another country um, or somewhere else around the world. That at first can seem ambiguous because we don't know for example, if we work in the UK, we want to we want to grow our operation into Germany, um, just as an example, or in the US, or vice versa. We know specifically if we were to do this in our hometown with our own business, 
we'd be we'd be up here because we have lots of knowledge and we can predict the outcomes of our actions. But if we want to take our operation in terms of a change and grow it organically in the US, bottle the current organization, just as an example, and say this um, uh, Ian Smith Co. UK is now going to be Ian Smith Co. US, and we're going to have two businesses and we're going to grow them. So we start off with we can do as much, we can do as much research and understanding and due diligence and everything else, but right from the beginning. We start off down here, unless we have people in the business who've done that before. Um, but for 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 let's say someone who who's an who's an entrepreneur and never expanded inter internationally uh, so far, then they they would be in the ambigu ambiguity box. Uh, but you are able to increase that by learning and developing a project team that is engaged that understands the current situation that is able to have confidence uh, and you're able to easily predict um, the, the outcomes of, of their actions and they are as well. Then you're able to travel around this, um, uh, this uh, matrix or this framework to understand when these uh, environments or when, when these uh, scenarios in the project environment uh, occur and be more equipped to deal with them. Again, by all means, ping me lots of comments. Um, as this is going out on five platforms, I might not see them live, but I always answer all of the questions. So this is the VUCA framework. It's, uh, it allows um, project managers to analyze and ascertain risks and opportunities to better manage and lead projects, understand um, more so how people think um, not that this helps you do that, but it, it, what I'm saying is you need to try and understand how other people are thinking and ensure that everyone is engaged, everyone is learning, applying what they've learned and then reapplying what they've learned, et cetera, et cetera, in line with the controls and the critical success factors, key success factors of the project business ch change, chosen or unchosen. So I will see you all on the next session. That's the VUCA framework. Contact me for any project management training requirements. I'm also training project managers in the project management qualification that's accredited by the Association for Project Management in the Strategy Smith Academy. Drop me a, a DM or email ian at the strategysmith.com and I look forward to seeing you. See you on the next session in any case. Ask away, but love to answer your questions, love to hear from you.